pyramid. Life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Soren Kierkegaard said these words long ago, and they ring so true. So to understand where we're going today, I'm gonna to tell you the story of Prince Albert, and we are going to go see Prince Albert's Cairn. On the internet, this is also known as Prince Albert's Pyramid. What is a Cairn? It's a really good question. So a Cairn usually is just a large marker of sort. So we're gonna go see a bunch of these large markers of sorts. Prince Albert was born in the royal lineage and he was born in Germany. Well, turns out that around the same time he was born, his mother had a sister and she also had a baby too. Now his mother's sister was part of the British royalty. So fast forward about 16 years and Prince Albert's cousin was in line to be the next queen of England. Now this is back in the 1800s. There was no Tinder, there was no Hinge, there was no Bumble. So what happened is that a couple of years before Queen Elizabeth was about to be queen, she got a list of all of the eligible bachelors. Sounds a bit like Bridgerton, right? Well, she's going through this list of eligible bachelors and she sees this nice young gentleman and she's like, oh, my heart. His eyes, his hair, his face, so gentle. He reminds me of myself. She swiped right. She saw a couple of other nice young gentlemen and those weren't so appealing to her. So two years later, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert were married. Queen Victoria and Prince Albert were madly in love. Just within two months of them getting married, they were pregnant with their first out of nine children. Now, the thing that makes this important is that at the time, it was very rare to have children survive from birth into adulthood. Surprisingly though, all nine of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert's children survive into adulthood. And we can thank Prince Albert for that. You see, Prince Albert, didn't get the title Prince Albert for a very long time. In fact, the public didn't really like him. It took quite a long time for them to come around. But Queen Victoria was in love with him. In fact, she had him help out with a lot of the royal duties. See, in the 1800s, there was a bunch of wars going on. The Ottoman Empire, there was some stuff with Russia and Crimea, there was the American Civil War, there was the whole movement to abolish slavery. And to top that, in the UK, there was also the movement to end child labor. Yeah, this is like all mid 1850s. And you know what? That's what Prince Albert did in Britain. Prince Albert took lead to end slavery. He took lead to end child labor, to raise the minimum working age so children didn't have to work and adults could earn a good living. Fast forward a couple of years, Prince Albert a little bit bored. He's confused. He's a man and back in the 1800s it was normal for men to be the head of the house, not the consort king or even prince as he would later be called. So he took charge of the household finances. He helped Queen Victoria by many different residences. One we're gonna try to get in today. It's closed because it's not tourist season right now. So I'm gonna try to sneak in and just get some pictures of the outside. And that leads us to where we are today. Why are we here hiking this very steep hill in the middle of the highlands? Well, to see these giant pyramids in the middle of the Scottish Highlands. What are they and why did they get here? We're hiking in the footsteps of Queen Victoria. You see, she and Prince Albert love to come to this area. They love the north of the British Isles. They weren't really into the pomp and circumstance, although they posed themselves very well. At every second they could get, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert came up to Scotland. They hung out here, they came to Manchester, they came to Liverpool, anything to escape the smoky, smoggy city of London. And wouldn't you escape if you had to be stuck in fancy clothes all day and you could just disappear into this beautiful, untouched forest 
that's been lived in since the early 3000 BC area. Now one day, whenever Prince Albert and Queen Victoria were vacationing up here in this beautiful landscape, one of the manor owners to a very large castle died suddenly. Prince Albert jumped on this. You see, he ran the estate's finances and they were looking for a bigger house to take their family on vacation. Having nine kids, plus a king and a queen and all of the staff to take care of that, they needed pretty big houses to stay in. For a number of years, they rented this place. Finally though, they were able to buy what we now know today as Baltimore Castle. Now we're gonna try to go in it, it's closed, but if we can't go in it, I'm just gonna put some photos from Scottish Heritage website on here. And I recommend that if you want to go into Baltimore Castle, you should know that it is still a king's castle. The current king, of England, I guess the current king of the UK, comes up here and he chills out sometimes. And so you can't go into all of it, but there are some parts that you can go into it. Now, if you want to go in, April 1st to the end of September is a really good time to go. Otherwise, if you go outside those times, it'll be closed. So quite often, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert would come up here, bringing in their children and enjoying a nice and quiet life. It's told that Prince Albert punished one of his children up here. You see, he wanted his children to be extremely smart and well-schooled. And because he was in charge of the household, he can make that happen. He fired the old teacher, the old nanny that they had, and brought in an entirely new staff to train the kids. Well, one of his kids wasn't really into doing foreign languages. You see, all the kids had to do two hours of foreign languages a day one in one language, one in another language. Now the reason for this is because all of the royals in Europe were somehow connected with each other. It's complicated, I don't really understand the upper echelon class, but that's how it is. Like even some of Prince Albert and Queen Victoria's lineage went to be like the, some attachment to maybe a queen of Russia, a queen or a royal aristocrat of Romania, some in Portugal, like they're everywhere. And it's just how royal families worked. You had to, uh, you had to be one to know one to marry one. So, Mr. Prince Albert did not like his son's resistance to not wanting to learn French and German. And Prince Albert probably took this personally as German was his first language that he learned as he grew up in Germany. So, he, took a stick out and beat his son. And now, wait, 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 before you get on me, for it, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Corporal punishment was normal then. It was normal to punish your children in such horrific ways. So that allegedly may have happened up here during one of the lessons of his sons. So let's go continue more to explore this forest. And I will continue to tell the story of Mr. Prince Albert and Miss Queen Victoria. So my watch claims we've climbed about 200 meters. I think that's not right, but we're up pretty high and we're not there yet. And I'll show you. So this is the trail here that we still need to go up. And in front of us, far in the distance right there, you can see something creeping between the trees. Zoom in, maybe. I swear it's there. So up between the trees is where we're going. This is St. Albert's Pyramid, St. Albert's Saint. This is Prince Albert's Pyramid, Prince Albert's Karen. Now I'll tell you a little bit more why we're remembering him like this when we get up a little bit further because I need to catch my breath. It's hot. So let's keep hiking. And then when we get to the top, I'll tell you a little bit more. Do we know why Queen Victoria had this commission for Prince Albert? Do we know why that she copied what we see in Egypt to commemorate him for on top of this beautiful overlook? 
Maybe, but I don't. So if you know, drop it in the comments because I want to know why she picked a pyramid of all of the shapes and all of the memorial things possible. Why this beautiful, glorious geometric shape? Let's take a little walk around the pyramid and inspect it. Bricks. You can see inside a little bit, kind of, not really. From this overlook, Queen Victoria was able to come and remember Prince Albert in one of their most loved vacation spots ever. Right here, we read the dedication to him. To the beloved memory of Albert, the great and good Prince Consort, erected by his broken hearted, broken hearted widow, Victoria, August 21st, 1862. And now it's time for me to tell you more about Prince Albert. Yay! Pyramid. So why did Queen Victoria build this huge, massive pyramid to remember Prince Albert? Well, they were in love. And this is my camera strap. They're also in love with me and it's gonna fall off. So let me fix that. There we go. Well, they were so in love. Queen Victoria never spent a day without Prince Albert. There was about a week where he had to go attend a funeral of two of his brothers who died from typhoid. And that was the first time in about 20 years that they ever spent time from each other. Now, as the years went on, Queen Victoria asked help from Prince Albert. Queen Victoria saw him as her king. And so there was no, nothing that she did not share with him. Prince Albert helped with the negotiations with the Ottoman Empire, with the Russia-Crimea War, and was strategically helping in the American battle in the Civil War that was handing, handing, handle, going on, it was going on. So what happened is that in 1861, there was a bunch of really bad stuff that happened. First, Prince Albert was taking a carriage one time and his carriage got spooked and nearly ran into a train. One of the horses died. Prince Albert jumped off the carriage before it ran into the train. And he came out of that with a really injured body. But at that time, he was just like, you know what? It's my time to go. The rest of the year wasn't too much better for him either. What happened is that two, I mentioned two of his brothers passed away from typhoid. See, typhoid was raging in the 1960s and he had to figure out, everyone had to figure out what to do with that. Well, later that year in 1861, one of his sons was said to have an illicit relationship with a woman out of wedlock. Queen Victoria was paranoid of pregnancy. What would they do with a bastard child? So Prince Albert took a carriage and went to see the sun to iron over whatever happened. Now for a couple of years already, Prince Albert was dealing with increasingly bad stomach pain and body pain and back pain, but he sucked it up. See, his aunt died a couple of months earlier that year. His aunt, Queen Victoria's mother, so while Queen Victoria was in mourning, Prince Albert took care of everything. Now at this time, Prince Albert was really sick and no one really knows why. It's alleged today that he probably had some sort of disease. The doctors at the time thought he had typhoid, but now they think it's more around Crohn's or some sort of abdominal cancer or something like that. Either way, he was so sick for a couple of years, but he was still taking care of everything. And this is just one of the many reasons that Victoria loved him. Now, I mentioned earlier that they were first cousins. Don't take this as the wrong way. Sure, genetically, it poses a challenge, but also anthro anthropologically, whoa, big word. Anthropologically, it puts a really interesting twist in terms of aristocrat behavior and aristocrat knowledge and all of that sort of stuff. Hey guys, look! Let's go check out this tiny little pond. Oh, this is so cute and pretty. 
You probably can't tell from the video, but the ground is really squishy. <laughs> Tiny little pond. So there's this herb that we have up here, and I think it's samphire or something. This is what it is though. You put it on fish, and it, look, it's just growing wild and crazy up here. So cool. So Queen Victoria was so sad already that year in 1861. Her mother had died and she had to bury her mother, and then her husband was on his deathbed. About a week after Prince Albert was officially diagnosed with typhoid, he succumbed from the disease. And then later that year, he was buried. Shortly after that, these are when all of the monuments across the UK started to pop up to commemorate King Albert. King Albert? Prince Albert. Um, Victoria got so much backlash from this, but she was heartbroken. Albert was the love of her life. To Queen Victoria, Prince Albert was her king. The government didn't let her give him that title because they didn't think he was worthy of it. It was only like for the last 10 years of his life that he actually got to be called a prince because of politics. So the public was outraged with Queen Victoria setting up so many monuments to commemorate this dude who wasn't even part of the British royal lineage. It was some guy from Germany. The pyramid was established so Queen Victoria could come up and just commemorate coming up here and hanging out with Prince Albert. So after Prince Albert died, Queen Victoria spent the rest of the 40 years of her life in deep mourning. In fact, she always wore black. Now, historians claim that this is because she was remembering him for the rest of her life. And she was sad. But did she wear black just because she was mourning? Or was Queen Victoria the person who invented the punk lifestyle? I mean, come on. Maybe for the first couple of years, she wore black to remember Prince Albert. But then after that, she's like, yeah, let's go. Queen Victoria may have been the goat of punk. Whatever it is and whatever historians right or wrong, I'm not gonna argue with them. I'm just putting it out there that Queen V invented the punk. So let's talk review time. Prince Albert's Pyramid or Prince Albert's Karen. Do I recommend it? 10 stars out of five, yes. So it's a little bit challenging to get here, but totally possible. I do, like I mentioned, I don't have a car. I just took pure public transportation and it's very near to Perth. You can also get here from Inverness, you can get here from Aberdeen, from Glasgow, from Edinburgh. Just check out the public transport buses. And for buses, you do pay on board. So you just go up to the bus driver, tell them where you're going, and then they'll get the best deal for you wherever you're going. The other thing, if you come here, wear good walking shoes. You know, it's a really nice path, as you can see. It's not always this big, but the path is beautiful. You also can ride your bike. So if you're mountain biking, take your bike up. It's super muddy, so make sure that you're good with mud and that sort of stuff. Um, theoretically, there's also more Karens in this area. So I'm gonna go try to find some more because I've only seen Prince Albert's Karen. And maybe, maybe I'll sneak into the castle. Probably not, but you know, we're gonna try. Gonna try, gonna try. It's really windy. So I'm somewhere. I've entered a gate and I hope that Google doesn't lie to me because otherwise it's gonna be a very long hike but I'm okay because it's a very beautiful country. So um, we're in actually North America right now. Surprise. No, kind of kidding, but not really. You see, a couple million years ago, the North American continental plate was drifting right and it ran into the European continental plate. 
Now, probably at that time, like a bunch of earthquakes and volcanoes and other really cool stuff like that happened. But what happened is that part of the North American continental plate got stuck and it stuck onto this line where we see the Inverness and where we see Loch Ness. And that's why Loch Ness is so deep because it's the intersection of two continental plates. So really, we're walking right now in North America, or what used to be North America a couple of million years ago. And south of this is where you see not North America. So yeah, I find that part pretty awesome. Just a little bit of geology and a little bit of history. Oh yeah, if you're not, if you're, a, if you believe the Earth is less than a million years old, calculate that into whatever science. That's fine. I want all inclusiveness on this channel. But that's why here also most of the trees in northern Scotland are birch alder and willow and those are a lot of the main trees that we also see in North America specifically Canada you see this used to be part of Canada as did Greenland and a bunch of other stuff but you know Canadians wanderlust we are wandering but we are not lost we hope Okay, let's go explore a little bit more and enjoy the scenery view and the nice little music montage I'll put over this. Now I've been in some beautiful places in the world and this is just untouched nature. I don't know if you can tell, but like the hills are just rolling Ah, uh, here comes a wind, so I hope the voice still goes. The trees are wild. You see older trees just falling over in the distance here. You know, and it's natural falling over. Not being cut. They say Scotland is bonnie. And it took me a while to figure out what bonnie meant. Bonnie means beautiful. And 100% like this place is gorgeous. I've, I've been walking here for about an hour and I'm not entirely sure where I'm going, but that's on me, that's not on Scotland. <laughs> I don't care. Look at what I get to see, like all of this. It's so beautiful. 100% recommend coming to Scotland, you guys. Like, I know that London is a massive tourist destination spot, but you don't see this in many other places in the world. Now, one thing that a lot of people do ask is, aren't you scared of bears? But what about mountain lions? And the thing is that there actually did used to be bears and mountain lions here, but, after the ice age happened, a lot of them died off. So now there's a bunch of, what are they? Road chickens. I'll put a, <laughs> I don't know what they're called. I recorded one when I hiked up to Arthur's seat the other day. So I'm gonna place that over the audio on this. So there's these very beautiful road chickens. Please comment if you know what that's called because I don't know, it's very beautiful. And they're super shiny, so it's really hard to miss them. There's also a lot of different brands of deers up here. Um, there's a species that's native to the UK, and I forget the name, but it's like a tiny baby deer mixed with a big dog, or that's what it looks like. Um, that species actually came from China, I believe or from somewhere in the Far East. And then what else do I see up here? Cows, there's lots of cows. Um, but there's really no predatorial animals up here. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's so beautiful and peaceful. Nothing to eat you. Now, if you're a runner, 
I highly would also recommend this place to run. The trail is really clear of big rocks and there's a long distance. So if you're training for some sort of a fell run or a long distance trail run or an ultra or something, 100% this is great because you're a little up in altitude a little bit. So you get less oxygen. And I mean, you get to look at all of this. Who wouldn't want to run in something like that? So here I am walking on the trail, admiring the trees, especially this big guy up here. And then take a look at this. In front of us, we see a little, what I thought was just a normal chicken or horse house. But look, you guys, it's a royal horse house. There's some royal things on the top of it. Maybe the royal horses go in here and eat. And it's surrounded by a moat. You can't tell, but there's a massive river that runs underneath this and it's all boggy. And it looks like the dogs have heard me. So let's go and walk by the royal dogs. Maybe it's a royal dog house. I don't know what this is. But I'm so fascinated to find out. Okay, so walking by the dogs. So now I'm gonna show you next this dog kennel that we're walking by. So it's next to this super old building, probably built in the 1800s sometime. And then on the outside, there's more royal fences and there's these massive dogs that want to bark at me. So here you can see the old dog house. Oh look, it looks like a trail. I wonder if that's the trail I should have come on. That would have been nice. But these dogs are pretty cute. Hi guys. So on this side, we have some electrical fences. There's probably like some horses and stuff in there. But I have to show you something. First I have to climb in this very boggy thing, but I swear it's gonna be worth it and I'll just do laundry later today and clean my shoes. You guys, you guys, <laughs> look at this. Look at this, it's an old fence post. Probably from like when Queen Victoria was here. Look how cool. Guys, check this out. I was just walking here, eating a sandwich, and there's this well dedicated to Queen Victoria. So cool. Now, why is it cool? It's right across from the River Dee. So the well is likely fed by super fresh water. And across from there, we can see the beautiful Scottish Islands. got a little cold I put on my jacket as you can see so I'm walking here put on my jacket put in a podcast and then suddenly right in front of me check this out <laughs> look look we see a castle castle this is so exciting so now I can finish telling you about the story of this castle so someone used to own it like an aristocrat or someone who was really famous i don't know all of that stuff so they used to own this castle and then whenever that person died and whenever prince albert saw it up for sale he was like mine so then they leased the castle for a long time until they were actually given the rights to buy the castle and since then i think it was like 1850s the castle has stayed in the royal family so it's like literally a living castle. And when we get a little bit closer, I'm gonna show you more of it. But I also wanna show you this. In front of us, we see another Karen. There it goes, we see another Karen. Victoria put up a bunch of these Karens up and it was just to remember a certain amount of people. And this was really just her thing. She liked doing that, no one questioned it. I find it pretty cool. I don't know why, it's just something entirely different and entirely not what I would expect from something in the British Isles. Here we see another really cute drinking well. And 
let's walk closer to the castle. We see some royal trees in front of us. You guys, I think I may have snuck in the castle. Shh, look at this. Look at this. It's a castle. Check this out. Okay, so I couldn't remember the year whenever Victoria moved in here and it's on the castle in the corner, 1855. And you can see the Victoria and Albert logo in the corner. So yeah, that's when they moved in. Isn't it pretty? I'm not sure why the clock is stuck at 3.35, but it's not 3.35. Otherwise, we'd be watching sunset at the castle. I want to highlight. Unicorns! Okay, let's finish our exploration of this very cool castle. We have a side castle, a top castle, a working fountain, more towers of the castle, and a very cold Scottish storm rolling in. So, do I recommend coming to see the castle? Yes. I will say though that, whoa, that's windy. I will say though that I read the reviews and a lot of people wanted to see more of the castle and it's closed off because it's actually a living, working castle as you can see. Um, I loved walking around it and I think that is more cool than going inside because castles get old after a while since you just feel poor and you can't afford any of the richness. So, five stars for coming here and walking around, exploring the grounds. You could bring your dog or your dogs, or if you have another animal that you walk around, then you can bring that. In the summer, I can imagine how busy this must be. I mean, look how pretty that is. We'll just take Panorama, castle time. There's a lot of other little tiny houses on the side that are probably open in the summer as well where you can go buy some drinks and cafe and whatever else your soul so desires. Um, so yes, whoa! five stars bring a lot of clothes though so when I've been here the temperatures varied probably about 10 degrees so it was super hot earlier and then the temperatures just plummeted and that's because we're nestled in like this massive hills the highlands vary in temperature greatly and that's what makes them so pretty and so empty so yes come here please so that concludes our tour and our little history lesson of Mr. Prince Albert and Miss Queen Victoria. I am gonna go and explore more of Aberdeenshire as I stare at these massive trees behind me. Charge my camera, find a bus, and then we'll see where I end up next. This is the most beautiful part I found in Scotland ever. So I hope that my enthusiasm and my story of Queen Victoria and Mr. Prince Albert excited you to come here because I think you should. It's affordable, it's beautiful. Look at these trees. You could not tell how old these are, but I guarantee they were here when Queen Victoria was here. By the way, if you haven't, like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow this channel so I can go to more very cool places. And when you like and subscribe and leave a little comment, it helps the YouTube algorithm let people know that I make cool stuff. So 
thank you so much and I'll keep making cool stuff for you to watch. Okay, charging the thing and then we're gonna go explore something else soon.